If you would, turn in your hymnal to number 322. 322 in your hymnal. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Let's all stand together as we sing. 322 together on that first. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer long. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet singing this evening. <clears throat> Pastor is out uh, on a much deserved vacation with Kathy and uh, but uh, he is always uh, well he's always missed when he's not here and he always misses when he's uh, not here as well. He misses being here. Um, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer and open up the service this evening. Heavenly Father thank you so much for this wonderful evening. Lord, that you've given to us. I pray that uh, you would just uh, uh, coordinate this entire service, Lord. Guide and direct us as only you can. I pray that the message that's heard would be exactly what we need this evening. I pray that the, the music that's sung would be honoring to you. God, I pray that uh, we would just um, uh, bring you glory today, Lord. I pray that you would look good through all that we do. We thank you and we praise you for all you've done for us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You may be seated. Let's turn over to 488 in our hymnal. 488, I was once a sinner, but I came. Pardon to receive from my Lord. 488, a new name in glory. Let's sing that first together. I was once a sinner, but I came. Pardon to story a sinner has come home for there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine with my sins forgiven i am bound for heaven never more to roam i was humbly kneeling at the 
We have a uh, missionary letter tonight from Brother John Hamilton, who was our uh, speaker in the missions conference, I think about three years ago, two or three years ago. It's a church planter. Uh, he's with U.S. Church Planting uh, Ministries. It says, greetings. I left Monday, July 6th, for my first trip to Elbow Lake, Minnesota, to assist Pastor Silas Clark in establishing the Elbow Lake Baptist Church. It was a wonderful trip. And the Lord honored our labors of love. We spent all of our time knocking on doors, several thousand of them, and presented the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am happy to report that we were blessed to see five adults receive Christ as their Savior. Pray for them as they grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you all for your prayers. I truly sense them. I walked 25 miles. That would be 49,409 steps during my time there going house to house. I'm guessing he has one of those Fitbits or something. Um, thank God for technology that enabled us to measure our steps. I thank everyone who contributed financially to make this trip possible. And rest assured that God will reward you for the souls that were saved. I'm making plans for my next trip and will let you know once God provides the funds and the time. Pray for Silas as they are gearing up for the first service on July 26th. Our efforts have gotten him several prospects to attend this service. I will report to you how it goes. God bless you and thank you so much for your love, prayers, and support. I could not do this without you. In his service, John Hamilton. That's great, uh, great note from Brother Hamilton. Uh, if you would, take your uh, prayer guide. Everybody get a prayer guide. Anybody need a prayer guide? Gage, do you need a prayer guide? Brother Taylor will take care of you. Thank you, sir. Good job. Well, if you look on, your, on the back of the prayer guide, let's start with the coming events. Do uh, continue to pray for the RU Inside Ministry. Um, they're at CRC. Uh, God's just doing great things there, and um, uh, be praying for the uh, ministry we're going to begin in London. I believe um, probably August 8th is what we're shooting for. Um, this is a Saturday morning, and uh, is our first day there in London. So if you can be praying for that, uh, we're going to kick off the RU program there. Uh, that would just be wonderful. Pray that that time uh, would work for the uh, prison and uh, just that we will um, find favor in their sight as far as that time, uh, there's timing there. Um, Friday, are you here at the church? Uh, 7 o'clock each week. And then on uh, Saturday, Soul Winning and Bus Visitation at 7 a.m. Uh, come on out. We have a lots, uh, lots to visit. Um, we're still uh, going through um, a lot of cards from VBS and just have a lot to uh, be visiting there. 
And then um, on sa- Sunday, uh, this coming Sunday, Pastor will uh, still be gone, and um, Brother Moreland's going to be preaching that day. Uh, you don't want to miss that. Uh, he's just uh, been, i uh, tell you what, the last couple of years, Brother Moreland's uh, uh, seen a lot, done a lot, gone a lot, and uh, he's, uh, it's just exciting every time uh, we get to hear him. So you want to uh, be here for Sunday school and Sunday morning and Sunday evening there with Brother Moreland on the 26th. And then the following week, uh, Pastor will be, will be back, but be planning now on August 2nd for the Give God Glory offering. We're going to do a special offering for um, the uh, renovation of the ladies' bathroom. Uh, we're going to begin renovating that by faith. And uh, so uh, hopefully here in the next few days, you're going to see some changes there. And in the next couple weeks, uh, the ladies' restroom will be uh, totally uh, remodeled. So uh, that'll be a good thing. But um, we uh, definitely need that um, offering there to offset those costs. So uh, be planning on what you can uh, be giving at that time. We sure appreciate it. Uh, and then if I um, have a couple requests here that uh, we need to um, add. Um, one, uh, we have the uh, arrangements for uh, Mrs. Polable's sister, uh, Leela. Um, the viewing will be on Sunday from 2 to 5, and then Monday from 11 to noon at Sheddinger Funeral Home on Broad, 3030 West Broad, and then the funeral itself will be at noon on Monday as well. And so if uh, you'd like to uh, go and pay respects there, that'll be Sunday from 2 to 5 p.m. Yes, ma'am. Oh, the funeral's going to be at Anchor. The viewing is going to be at Anchor then from 11 to noon. Okay. Okay, so Sheddinger, the uh, Sunday viewing is at Sheddinger from 2 to 5, and then the viewing is going to be 11 to noon, and then the funeral at noon at Anchor Baptist Church there on Climb Road. Um, so if you have any other questions, you can ask me your uh, poll labels there. Um, then a, uh, a new prayer request. Uh, Amanda Bray, she's uh, been here a couple times. This is uh, Kate Harvey's sister. Um, she had a baby on, um, I guess it was Monday morning, ended up being, and the baby's having some complications, and uh, mom is doing much better, um, but uh, continue to pray uh, for the baby. I don't remember her name. Anna Grace? Um, so be praying uh, for the baby. They're still having some complications. She's in ICU, and... Um, uh, still on oxygen and fluids, and just really um, uh, uh, let's bathe her in prayer, and um, along with Amanda and her husband's name, Tim. Yes, Tim Bray, as well, and the whole family. I'm sure. Uh, so if you can add her to your list, um, that would be wonderful. And then on the inside, we do. Uh, we do praise the Lord for uh, Brenda Mann being baptized on Sunday, becoming a member. And also we had 25 at CRC and uh, five saved. And that's just always just exciting, uh, exciting times. Um, remember uh, those in the health, uh, health section there and also under the cancer and um, military. And uh, let's just keep... Con- Continuing to pray for those in authority. It's um, just a lot of uh, a lot of things happening now at the uh, in the government, both on the state and federal level, and uh, we just need to continue to pray that uh, God would direct those in authority. Um, the salvation list is ever growing, but uh, just it's uh, easy to see that salvation list and just keep on uh, glossing over it. But uh, let's really uh, be praying for those folks on that salvation list that somebody would come by, um, come by their way and uh, give them a, somebody that they'll pay attention to and listen to and give them a clear um, uh, salvation uh, message there.
And then uh, continue to pray for the unreached people groups. Each week we put about nine or ten um, different ones. Believe it or not, these are all different. Now, all the ones that you've seen on there, they're, they're all different. They may be a lot of them in the same country or <laughs> uh, whatnot, but they are different people groups. And we need to continue to pray for those unreached uh, people groups. There are so many. And then um, our missionaries, highlighted by uh, Brother Hamilton with uh, U.S. Uh, church planting. Um, Brother Taylor, can I ask you to come and um, pray for us here? As he prays audibly. Let's pray with him silently. And uh, we'll go to the Lord in our prayer for these items. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you now uh, again, Lord. We thank you that we can come to the straight to your throne of mercy, Lord, yes. with these petitions. Lord, I'd just like to lift up our pastor right now. Keep him safe and healthy and let this trip be a, a time of refreshing and, and just bless him, Lord, wherever he's going and bring him back safely, give him traveling mercies. And we thank you that he's able to get away, Lord. Build him up and we thank you, Father. Lord, we lift up all these folks to you tonight on the health issue list Lord there's so many that are, are in need of your healing hand Lord we know that you still work miracles and we know that you do all things well And Lord, we just pray for each and every one of them that you would give them what they need tonight, Lord. And give them grace to go through their illnesses as, they, as they're recovering, Lord. And give them peace as you touch their bodies. And Lord, I pray for each and every one of these church ministries that we have here going on, Lord. and Father, there's so many to, to name them all, but I just pray that the finances would continue to come in and to supply these needs, Lord, especially the RU ministries here at church and Friday nights and the RU inside at prison it's helping turn a, turn it around lives Lord as they get to know the truth about you about Jesus being the only way to heaven Lord Father I pray for the recently baptized Brenda Mann, Lord, being obedient to you, Lord. And just pray that you strengthen her and keep her in the word, Lord. And Father, the, all the names here on this list for salvation, I pray that, uh, again, that they'd not have a moment's rest they would not have a good night's rest until they come to that day where they might accept uh, you as Savior Lord pray that you again put someone in their path that would give them the gospel maybe just one more time of hearing it Lord and They'd realize just how bad they need to be saved. 
Father, I pray for each one of these on the cancer list. Each one of them, Lord, is looking for a miracle, a cure. And I pray that you touch their bodies, whichever one it is, whatever they've got, Lord, I know nothing is too big for you. And I pray that you would touch them, Lord, and that a, 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 and a miracle would be done and that they would give you all the praise, honor, and glory for it quickly and not dismiss it as misdiagnosis, and, but give you the praise where it's due, Lord, for every healing. Pray for our military, Lord. They're all serving around the world in different places, Lord, and even here at home, I pray for each and every one of them. Keep them safe tonight, Lord. And Lord, I pray for the, the fallen ones in Tennessee just recently, Lord, that was murdered, shot down for, for nothing, for all the wrong reasons, Lord, blindness. But I pray for the families and their, and their loved ones, Lord. And Lord, I, I even pray for the ones that did this and the ones that are full of hate, Lord, that, that they would hear the word, the, the gospel, the love instead of hate. They've been raised up on, on poison and from a baby and that's all they know is to hate and, and they know nothing but lies. And I pray that tonight some of them, Lord, would hear that gospel and accept Jesus as their Savior. And I know you'd want none to perish. Pray for all those that's in authority, Lord, from our governors to, to the mayors and all the towns and Plumb on up into our governmental offices, Lord, and that they would, Lord, start making these decisions in, on good moral sense, Lord, that they would come back to you. They would turn to you again as this nation once was. They'd repent, Lord. And bow the knee. I'd pray you'd change their hearts, Lord. I know you can turn the hearts of the kings as the rivers of water. And these men and women are no different, Lord. Pray that we'd get back to prayer in school and get away from this abortion and this murdering of these innocent children. You've got no one to speak up for. Pray for our Supreme Court, Lord, that where they've got ultimate power and instead of enforcing the laws, they change them. I pray that their consciences would be touched, Lord, in their hearts that they would want to do the right thing according to your will and the will of the people that put them there, the Americans. Lord, I pray for all these unreached people groups. Each week, Lord, we look at just countless thousands and of the, these folks don't even have a Bible, Lord. Don't have the word in, in their language and I just pray for each and every one of them, Lord, that they would soon have a, a copy of the Bible in their language where they can understand it. Bless the ones that make it possible from the ones that contribute to the ones that labor and the ones that take it over there, Lord, and the printers here. And bless them, fill them with whatever they need, Lord. I know that you own the cattle on a thousand hills and, and all is yours anyway, Lord. Pray, pray for all these missionaries, Lord. Bless them tonight, Lord, and 
put people in, in their paths that would bless them, Lord, your servants that, that might reach out and help some of these missionaries with what they need above and beyond. And Lord, I pray for the Hamiltons especially in church planning, Lord, as they're going about and helping get these new churches on established, Lord. Bless them all. Keep them healthy, Lord, and help them get everything done, Lord, that they need to do for your, your glory. Father, be with the Brother Jarvis as he opens up the word tonight. And, and let us all be attentive and pay attention to what he has to say. And bless him, Lord. Father, may everything that's said and done here bring honor and glory to you. We thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brother Don. All right. Let's see. We have uh, Brother Adam Jarvis is here with his couple of his kiddos anyway. I think the rest are in the apartments. Uh, I think Lily's not feeling well tonight, or somebody's not feeling well. I'm not sure who <laughs> who that is, but uh, Adam and Elisa are uh, in town for a couple days. They will be with us um, for our missions conference coming up. That'll be exciting. And uh, Denise, have you been here for a, a church service yet? You have not. I didn't think so. Denise, uh, let's get her a visitor's card, if you would, Brother Don. And uh, Denise, it's great to... Uh, have you tonight, and uh, Denise will give you a, a welcome card, and if you fill that out, just so we can have a, a record of our visit, uh, your visit with us, and go ahead and keep the pen as our gift to you for coming, and then when the offering plate comes by in a few minutes, you can put that in. That would be wonderful. Let's give Denise a warm welcome. Very good. All right. Well, would you turn with me to number 56 in your hymnal? Number 5-6. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. Let's all stand together as we sing the old rugged cross together. On that first. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering. And would you greet one another? Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing the last stanza together.
couch heresy, old rugged cross, till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a to that old rugged cross I will ever be true. Let's sing the last together. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true. Its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory for seated so we have the ushers come for our evening offering let's pray father thank you again for the great opportunity we have to come and open up your word Father, help us not to take it lightly. Lord, this is what we walk by, what we live by. Lord, what we walk by faith and trust. You are your word, Father. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're going to be judged by in the end, in the final day. Lord, it's your word that will come forth. And Lord, I pray that uh, as we listen to the speaker Lord you hide him behind the cross Lord may he say exactly what needs to be said open our ears to hear Lord help him not to be dull of hearing Lord may we uh, be able to say that we heard from you each and every one of us and Lord I just pray that your perfect will will be done in Jesus name we pray Amen, Amen. We get to uh, hear from Brother Jarvis tonight. Um, I'd venture to say, outside of the Lord Jesus Christ, my life probably has changed more by knowing Brother Jarvis than anybody on the earth, uh, for many reasons. Um, one, he is my wife's father. Um, but uh, even more than that, he's, uh, he's just been a great, uh, a great friend and uh, an uh, individual who's challenged me spiritually um, uh, probably more than anybody else, and I really appreciate that. Um, but uh, Brother Jack Jarvis is going to be uh, preaching our missions conference, 
And so we get just a little bit of a foretaste tonight. I, I think you'll enjoy um, what he has to say. It's always um, just a joy to listen to. has a, a different preaching style than anybody else that I know. But uh, that's a wonderful thing. And so, um, Brother Jarvis, why don't you come on ahead and give us what the Lord's given you. Yes. Well, how's everybody doing today? Um, I consider telling you a joke because, you know, Pastor likes to tell jokes, but, you know, sometimes the jokes... Uh, told a, a joke one time in, uh, in a Mexican, um, Mexican conference. There was, a, there was a, uh, a Mexican guy who was interpreting for me, and uh, I was really late for that conference. We, uh, we got held up at the border. It was down in Mexico, and we got there just, people were singing when we came in, you know, so we're racing, I was speaking, so I raced in there, and I realized I'd forgotten my brown shoes. And, the only, and I had this brown suit, and the only thing else I had was my new white tennis shoes. <laughs> so I just put them things on and came up on stage, and you know, it's was, it was pretty obvious. I wasn't standing behind a pulpit or anything, and, and so I thought I'd make a joke, you know. About, I said these two pastors were walking through the woods. His bear started chasing them, and he started running like crazy, and, you know, and, but the bear is slowly catching up with them. So the one pastor said to the other, hold it, just a minute. He stopped and yanked out of his backpack a pair of tennis shoes and put them on. And the guy said, you can't outrun the bear with the tennis shoes. And he said, I don't have to outrun the bear, I have to outrun you. <laughs> well, well, everything was fine till I said the word outrun. Because the interpreter, he, he was pretty good at it. He was a Spanish guy, and he didn't know the word. So there was like three Americans in this crowd of about 80 people. In, and uh, those three guys laughed, and the guy kept saying, huh, what, what? I said, outrun, you know, outrun, out. And he's going, huh, what? I, never mind, just never mind. So I went through, and I finished the thing, and I got to the very end, and uh, we had this um, uh, food fellowship afterwards, which was an international dinner, they called it. And that's because the American missionary brought a turkey. Everything else was Mexican. But <laughs> we... We sat down there. The lights are always really dim, which is really good when you're eating some of that food because you don't know what it is, and that's fine. It tastes good, just don't ask any questions. That's the thing you got to remember. <laughs> but this pastor came up to me, and he says, now, what was that joke you were He said, I didn't get it. I said, well, maybe I should have said that he didn't have to run faster than the bear. He had to run faster than you. Well, then the guy went, ha, ha, ha. He started laughing. He started going around to each person one at a time, telling that joke. <laughs> The whole place, the next hour, he was going and telling everybody to joke one by one. But anyway. So anyway, jokes uh, sometimes turn out well, sometimes not. But um, I'm gonna, what I'm going to talk about tonight is uh, missions. And because, of course, all of you know, this church is taking a mission trip uh, the second week of June 2016, about a little, over, a little less than a year from now. Now... Um, I want to talk a little bit about the mission trips, and uh, uh, let me just say, my, when I started in the mission, uh, as, as a, in missions, uh, I did not have any great background of anything other than basically a church pew for being a missionary. I didn't go to seminary, I wasn't any smart guy, theologically, anything like that. Uh, God called me from the mission field, not because I had something that God uh, could use, because nothing any of us have God needs to use. The only thing he wanted was a willing heart. And so I was willing to go, and he t I never imagined, I never th I thought about missions. I remember I had prayed to God, saying, God, I'll, I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll do whatever you want me to do. But I couldn't imagine, see, my problem was I couldn't think of what I could do for him. That was what my problem was. And, I, and uh, so I went on this uh, mission trip, and I think... Uh, uh, let's see, my son, Adam, was sitting back here. He's, uh, how old are you, 32? And uh, he was um, 12 at the time. So uh, we went on a mission trip, and it was an exciting week. Uh, mainly they wanted, uh, my daughter had this chalk drawing thing she did, and 
that's what they wanted. They didn't really want me or anything, but they wanted her to stay for the summer, go in and out of Mexico, deep down to Mexico. At that time, they are going. And uh, the, the director there told me, he says, we'll take care of her just like she's our own child. He says, just like my own child, I'll take care of her. Now, she was 16, and I'm going to turn my daughter loose over to somebody else and go down. I said, no, I can't do that. He said, well, have your old family come. Now, that was something that, uh, uh, that's kind of where it started. I, of course, I tried to say, I have a house, a job, a mortgage, and all that. And, you know, and he said, who cares? God can take care of that. And what can you say to that? You can't say, no, he won't. You, I didn't know what to do. So I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll pray about it, and you pray about it. And, uh, and I prayed about it, and uh, God opened every door, broom. And that was in a very short period of time. So I went home and uh, got home on a Friday. Uh, the following Monday when I went to work, now this is between the Friday and Monday, my boss said, how'd you like that mish trip? And I said, it was great. That's why I'm giving my two-week notice and I'm going there for the summer. And he goes, huh? Do you know what you're doing? And I said, no, but God does, so I'm going to go. So <laughs> off I went. And uh, I, I tell you that because uh, some of you kind of imagine that that, I, that couldn't happen to me because it's impossible. And that, that's the word that's our word. That's not God's word. That's our word. We, we think things are impossible, but God, uh, and God is the God of the impossible. He loves the impossible. All he needs is someone to believe he can do it. That's what we all call faith. Now, when, uh, when I went down there, it was, uh, there, was, there was a lot of things about that, but, but I just want to say now, now I'm getting back to this mission trip. I mean, uh, there's a lot of reasons why people would say, well, I can't go. Uh, it isn't a question of whether you can't. Would you like to go? you got to start there. Do you think God would want you to go? Because I want to tell you something of these mission trips. That particular mission trip is one of the best mission trips you could take. Uh, when this church went on that mission trip, was that two years, three years? Oh, no, it was, um, three years? Is that three years ago? Five. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, that's where she met. That, I'm telling you, that's where. Um, oh, anyway. it's not really a couples type of thing, but uh, you know they end up getting married. But anyway, uh, <laughs> let me just say that uh, uh, that mission trip. It was a tremendous mission trip. They came down. On a, I'll tell you about that. Now some of you might know this story, but they came down on a bus. They rented a bus from a church down here in Cincinnati. Um, it was painted really nice. That was about the good, best thing about it. But they drove that thing down. They had trouble all the way down. And they made it to within about 100 miles of the property. And it, they had oh, the overheating and all that. So we ended up with one of our uh, 1966 buses, which, by the way, are still running down there. 66 and 69, a couple of Greyhound buses. And they run great. And they keep still running great. Um, had to go out about 100 miles, picked them up, brought it back. And they brought the bus in in the middle of the night. Now, I have said many times, everyone loves to hear a great story of faith, but they wouldn't want to be there when you're going through it. Because that's where you make those steps of faith. Anyway, so this bus came in, and uh, you know, we didn't know what was wrong with our mechanic. It came in late on, uh, I think it came in late on uh, Saturday night, and so the mechanic wasn't, it was too late for them really to look, see what was really wrong with it. And so Sunday, of course, was church, and so we didn't do anything then. But then he looked at it Monday morning. And so he came and told me early Monday morning, he said, that bus, it has a double radiator set up in the back. And he says, I can't believe that those things, he says, those are rusted so bad, I'm surprised they didn't just fall out of the bus on the way down here. They were rust, the rust was so bad in there. He says, they both need to be replaced. I've already called the radiator guy. They're special made, specially made radiators. They have to be shipped in from out of state. And the guy on the phone just giving me these estimates says it's going to be somewhere around uh, seven or eight thousand dollars to, for, to get them fixed. It. And they probably, no way they can get that done until the Monday following the Friday they wanted to leave. And I thought, oh, this is going to be great. So I walked into the group, and I had them all in there Monday morning, I said, and I told them a couple of stories of God doing wonderful things, and I said, you know that, that saying I've said before, that everybody loves to hear the great 
victor victorious story, but nobody wants to be there. I said, well, you're going to get that chance because there's no way in the world other than a miracle from God that that bus is going to get you back on Friday. I'm going to tell you that right now. And then I went through all the list of things that was wrong with it. And I go, uh, well, I said, here's what we do. We go, we give it over to God, and we do what we need to do. You do take step one, two, you're, we're down there to have a mission trip. That's what we're going to do. So uh, anyway, long, I won't go too long with this story, but the way it, way it had worked out is the, uh, uh, the guy ended up being a, a Christian, the guy who had the, had the uh, radiator shop, and, and he ended up brought the price down. And then the church that they got the bus from, they were going to pay for the radiator. But uh, so then they shipped in these radiators. They're supposed to come in on a Thursday, which would have been just fine the Thursday before the Friday are going to leave. And then they'd test them on the bus. The problem was that they were shipped separ on separate pallets because radiators, if they bump against each other, it kind of wrecks them up real quick. And one of the pallets didn't make it. It was still in, uh, I think it was New Orleans or something. You know, that thing was over there. This is on Thursday. They want to leave Friday. So I, was, I said, oh, man, that's Satan. He just loves to make things look bad. You know what I mean? I mean, he always does that. And uh, the impossible, it's always looks impossible. To us, it always looks impossible. It's never impossible to God. Well, anyway, um, as they did it, they ended up, uh, they said, no, they said, don't try to ship the one wherever that is to us. We give us a new one, ship it over, do overnight shipping. And they, they set up this process. Everybody along the way was helping. And end up getting the, it got shipped in on Friday, I don't know, Friday after Friday morning, somewhere around then, and they the, they picked it up, they worked on the thing, brought it over. Anyway, nine o'clock Friday night, they drove out of there. They drove all night and uh, see, all day, all night, all day, and got here just in time for church Sunday morning. <laughs> Pulled them out there, uh, and God God did many many miracles with that. But but the point there was the mission trips really put you in that situation where you have to trust God. And you know that's what they're about. That's why it's a good thing. It's a good thing to, to look at what's going on outside of our country. I'll tell you one thing. It really makes you appreciate the country we're in. We've got a lot of problems. We're still the very best country there is, buddy. I'm telling you. And as long as God lets us go along here, we've still got the best. But we have down there, you, you, you trust, I mean, God, you go across the border, you go into Mexico, another country, you don't have any rights. You have to, I mean, you, you have zero rights. If that border guard gives you any trouble or he doesn't like you or whatever, and, you know, what we, and every problem we solved on, and we pray, that's how we solve problems. And believe me, prayer works. If that's the only option. Now, sometimes, let me just say, biggest problem we have, and I've, I don't know how many times I've said this, but the biggest problem we have when we pray is we have a problem, we pray it, and then we, and we start getting nervous because we don't know how God's going to do it. Of course, you can't think on the level of God anyway, but we think, oh no, this really looks bad, so maybe I should make plan B in, the, in case that God can't come through. Well, basically, the reason you make plan, plan B is because you're afraid to trust God, and you want to leave plan B so that you can have something to do with it to make sure it happens. And whenever you do that, you look at James chapter 1, and it says this. It's what we call wavering faith. And for wavering faith, God will give that man nothing. Don't ever make plan B. I know it's, it's fearful sometimes about not making a plan. I know a missionary... You know, to be able to trust God. A missionary friend of mine, he was talking about, he, he had come back from, uh, he was out in the bush, one of these, I don't know, Papua New Guinea or one of those kind of places in Africa. And uh, when he was out there and, they, and, the, and the kids or whatever got sick, there's no doctor anywhere. What do you think they did? They prayed. They prayed. And uh, their kids would get healed and, because they didn't have a choice. Well, the missionary said he came back with his daughter. His daughter had uh, met this man, they got married, had a little child. His daughter, when she was younger, she was in a, and they were in church, and the child had some sort of problem in church, and they were, she was worried, she said, please, we've got to get him to the hospital right now, we've got to go, we've got to run, because he's not, he's not breathing. And he says, hold it, don't take him to the hospital. Pray, pray for him. Ask God, God's the one who's going to heal him anyway. It's not the doctors, it's God's going to be the one to do the healing. And now let me tell you something, 
Some of you people are mothers. That wasn't an easy thing to do when you know there's a, a hospital somewhere around. And they prayed, and the little boy was fine. Now, you know, faith can be a, can be a wonderful thing. And, and God, uh, faith isn't an option, by the way. Those of you who know about God, he, uh, he considers uh, without faith it is impossible to please him. Impossible, now there's a word he uses, and not often, but impossible to please him without faith. It's so important because this book, faith means you believe everything in this book. That's what faith is. And when you say you can't have faith, it means you can't believe God. And uh, this, by the way, you know what this is? This, some people think this is a, a book. Well, it's actually more than that. God wrote one book out of all the millions of books in the world, one. And it's not just a book. It was a book he, the Lord of the universe, wrote to you. You, not the person next to you, to you. And because anybody in this room can pick up this book with a problem, and God can speak to them and give them an answer. It's a living book. That's why they call it a living book. You want to know what the voice of God, you had it right here. There's a whole book, and it's a nice, thick book. It's got a lot of things he's got to say. It's easy to find out what pleases God. Start reading it. He doesn't change. That's why the, the Old Testament's a really good book to read. Because God doesn't change. All the things in the Old Testament that he got angry with Israel about, he'll get angry with you at if you don't do it, what he's saying to do. God is a, is a steady, he's a, he's, a good, he's a good God. He does good things. Psalm 119.68, look that up. God, he is a good God, he does good things. But, but the times when it seems like he's not doing something good is because you don't understand what he's doing. But our God... Now, let me, let me just go back to the mischief here, as we're, and I'm going I'm to kind of go on with different things here. But uh, now, you say, well, why wouldn't you want a mischief? We might say, well, I couldn't afford it. OK, if somebody paid for it. I say, well, my boss wouldn't let me off the work. And you say, well, God can handle that, too. And uh, you say, well, would you um, say, well, I'm, I, uh, I'm really I, I think I should be younger to go on a trip like that because, you know, there's heat and all that, and I don't do well with that. Well, uh, what you can do with that, now, I want to tell you, there's a lot of people who have been on mission trips. We had a lady went on a mission trip that had this, uh, I don't know what it is. She was an old lady. She had a problem where she couldn't uh, perspire, and that's a dangerous thing in your hot situation. Your body can't cool itself. It's a cooling process for your body. And she said, well, I'm coming, but I'm not going on any of the trips, any of the week during the trips, because we had day trips we were going on out there. And she says, well, I'm going to just try one. So she came on the first night. And uh, to, to try to <laughs> this lady, she was a pastor's wife. And what she did is she got one of these uh, those blue rags that they use in the print shop, or, you know, kind of a, kind of a, um, garage rag type thing, you know, about that. And it was all, but it wasn't dirty or anything. And she soaked it with water and put it on her head. She walked around like that because then she felt kind of cool. Well, feeling cool. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so she, and she did, she ended up going to everything all week long. She didn't think she could, but, but God worked it out. She did. It was pretty funny. She was in the truck. She's saying, I want to say something to people. What can I say? You say, well, hola. That means hi. You know, say hola. So she's going along and sees some, some kid, bunch of kids, she yelled out, Ole! And they go, no, 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 not Ole. Blah. Anyway, <laughs> we have a lot of fun with people in their Spanish, you know, having, uh, uh, doing, saying unusual things. But, um, but you know, if you, the, the, the point here is the, is the mission trip is, is a powerful way to put yourself in a position where you have to trust God and see him, see him do, do things you've never seen God do before. I mean, have a problem. God loves to solve problems if, if, if you give it to him. If you don't, try, if you know, what is the, f the first thing that people usually do? Is what am I going to do when you have a problem? Now, if it's a major problem, sometimes the last thing you do is say, well, I guess maybe we should pray about it. You know, maybe that'll, 
you should take it to God first. You have the God of the universe, the God of the impossible, has cattle on a thousand hills. He's omnipresent, omnipotent. He can do anything. Why wouldn't you want to turn that prayer over to him? Why wouldn't you want to do that? Do you know everything changes when you turn the prayer over to God, when you turn a situation over to him? Because now you got the, you can have the Lord on your side, and believe me, he wants to be there for you. You are his children. He loves you more than any parent loves a child in this room. And, and I know that you love your children very much. He loves you more than that. He wants you to come to him. That's our God. That's the kind of God we have. Now, this mission trip, too, you can, you can take your kids. You can, uh, uh, it reminds you, too. The other thing about this trip, it reminds you of the gift that we have that sometimes we take for granted that we call salvation. Do you know there isn't anybody who should have a frown on their face when you are on the straight road to glory and nothing in this heaven or earth could take you off that? Do you know how many people don't, don't have that? How are, are terrified about death and what's going to happen? Half of this world has never even heard the word Jesus. Half. And good night. That's our job is to try to reach them. And, and don't don't be fearful about doing that. We've taken these mission trips, and some of you know uh, Juarez hasn't had such a great reputation in the last few years. Uh, they have gotten better, though, I'll say. It's uh, the, the cartel war. Cartel wars are basically over. Um, but, and now we, people are out at night, and they walk around at night. They take their kids out at night. When they do that, then you know that things are better when that happens. They're not, they're not afraid. Uh, so it's, a, it's something that you don't have to be fearful of that. But we, even during that time, we went on these mission trips. And I'm telling you, God always took care of us. And I didn't go because I thought God is going to protect me. I went because I knew God wanted me to go. We take God's word to God's lost whom he loves. There's no doubt in my mind that he wants us to do that. He commands it. We find all kinds of scripture in the Bible about that. So when a problem comes or something makes you fearful about that, it isn't from God that that's coming from. The problem, God is not putting roadblocks in our way. Somebody else is. So what you do is you say, I'm going to go forward no matter what. Now listen, no matter what. Because if God be for me, who can be against me? I know that's an easy thing to say. It's tough when you're in the situation. Um, but, but God is for you. And you know, I, I, like, I, I, like when I was talking about this when the church was down there and this big problem happened. <laughs> I thought it was great because I knew something good was going to happen. God was going to show some people some wonderful things, and it was great, some big problem, because God can solve anything. Of course, it's exciting when he moves the storms and moves things around, you know, so you see a storm come and you pray, and uh, some of you may not be used to doing things like praying that a storm that's coming directly at you will do something else than take away your, whatever you're trying to do there. And... Uh, I've seen the storms move. I've seen them go the other way. I've seen them split in half and go like that. Some big holes in the sky, you know, and a storm going around us because there's a big circle in the sky. I mean, that's pretty spectacular. God doesn't always do that sort of thing. Sometimes it's a small thing. Sometimes a big thing. Sometimes there's just music somewhere. You pray that that stops, and it stops. What we want to do, what we want to want you to learn when you go on a trip like that, is to understand that God can do anything. We don't take, um, I don't know if advantage is a good word to use, but, but we, have the, we, are, we are the children of the king. We are actually in the kingdom now. Do you know that? We're part of the royal family. We have a power, his power, and he will grant it to us. All we have to do is believe. Do you remember when Jesus, when all the healings and things, one of the things he always said, do you believe that I can do this? And what happened when he went into his town there? They said, well, we know who this is. This is, you know, this is uh, Mary's daughter, uh, Mary's son, and, and he's got them. You know, his brothers and sisters, they, and they, they couldn't believe that he was the Christ. And so there's very little he could do there because they didn't believe. 
God wants us to believe because if we do that, he'll give us, he will open up the windows of heaven. He will pour out blessings. And by the way, what are those blessings? What is a blessing? Riches? Well, I'll tell you what. Riches in the Bible uh, have not, didn't go, haven't gone very well from a lot of people there. In fact, they were a curse. And Christ talked about that. But you know, Abraham was extremely rich. You know, Moses, I, I suppose, he was rich too. But those people were focused on God, so the riches wouldn't bother them, so God gave them them great riches. Some, most of the people with riches, though, couldn't handle it. And most of us couldn't handle it. If you think, if you think uh, winning the lottery would be a great idea, take a, read up on what happened to most of those people who were won lottery things. Their whole lives were destroyed. Now, we... Um, uh, You know, there's some things that, that I learned when, as a missionary being down in Mexico. It was the greatest, by the way, you know, I, I talk about this uh, going down there and, you know, not, when we first went down, our, our family moved down there, we had half of the support we were supposed to have and, and uh, usually laughed. And it was pretty close to, pretty close to that because halfway through the month we basically ran out of money. So first half of the month we ate well and the second half of the month we prayed. And... Uh, and I want to tell you something. It wasn't a bad thing because God always, always met our needs. At once, we didn't always get, but needs, he always took care of that. Even now, Sherry and I, and you know, we travel all over the country. And um, I mean, my kids for a while, they traveled with us. And, and we, that, was, uh, that, was a lot of, that, that was a lot of fun. They, they, uh, of course, we had a smaller car at the time. They got to get crammed in the back seat and... Uh, Tanya usually had to sit in the middle because my two daughters, or my, no, my daughter, Tanya had to sit in the middle because <laughs> Adam and Krista, the other two, just would fight like crazy, you know, so she had to sit in the middle. She said, oh, come on, I always have to sit in the middle, you know, this isn't fair. Anyway, um, but we had really, we had really wonderful times, and God took us through that, and we learned things. God, God doesn't care about money. You've got to understand that. You don't worry about the money. It isn't, to God, money isn't an issue. Your attitude toward it is. And we had, a, we had a, right near the beginning of our ministry, we had a, uh, problems, well, not problems, but when we first started, in fact, the very, one of the very first churches we went to, uh, to to present the ministry, people were really excited. They had a church full of people, and um, some of the people that had been on that, um, uh, had been in that church were on the mission trip. So actually two churches, two churches came together, about 300 people, and uh, they were all excited and weeping and crying after preach, and it was just happy. That, and the pastor gets up and he's going, "You just need to, you need to support these guys. They're doing God's work, and that's what we want to do." And he really wound, whipping them together. And they and the money. And I'm sitting in there trying to and money, big piles of money going by. And I'm trying to not, not about the money, you know. And I kept thinking that. And uh, and the point there, at the, we're at the very end there. The pastor. Um, I mean, this is kind of a long story. I'm not going to go into the whole story, but. The pastor um, passed out during the right after the church, right at the fellowship meeting after the meeting at the church, and the uh, youth. And so he was over at his house, and the uh, and the doctor said, "You just need some rest." And we were staying at his house, so he woke up in the morning and he said, um, or he his wife came out and said, the "Pastor, I'm not feeling well. I just want to tell you, thank you very much. Goodbye." And uh, he had told me the day that. Earlier the, the the day the Saturday before he said I'm going to give you everything that comes in our love offering, and so this they had this big bunch of people and this I, I and then, so anyway so he she said so he can't see you so goodbye thank you very much so we drove away and I think I, I'm not sure I think Adam was it was like he was like 12 or 13 and the other young kids there kind of. As we're driving away, they're kind of giggling in the back seat, you know. I said, okay, okay, let's, uh, let me just say this. I want everybody to listen up. We're not going to talk about this. It has, you know, we didn't do anything wrong. We don't, I don't want to hear about it. There's nothing good can come out of this. We start to discuss this, that, you know, what, what happened there. I said, but we can, we are just going to go on to the next, and we're going to leave it at that. I don't want to talk about it at all. So we did that. And the uh, next church we went to was, uh, I think it was a Wednesday night, and I spoke, and I think there was maybe 20, 
uh, 20 people, something like that at the church. And they gave me a love offering, and I went out the door. It was in my pocket. And uh, one of my children said, say, uh, did they give us a love offering? And I said, yes, they gave us a love offering, because it was just the previous Sunday. Was I think. And so I handed it, and, and he says, can I see it? I said, yep, handed it back and said, good night. This check's for $750. And I said, everybody stop for a moment and listen. I said, God was watching us when the first thing happened. We didn't whine and complain and all that, and God blessed it because he can always solve the financial problem. That's always the case. God can always do that. You can't live by fear. You can't let Satan get you and, and try to think, I can't know yet. No, I heard uh, Bob talking about it. I know they're going to do a, an upgrade here, I guess, in a, in a lady's bathroom and something they needed for a long time. And, and you're thinking, well, I don't know, you know, I don't have very much money. Keep this in mind. Anything you do for this place is as unto God. You clean, sweep, you do the floors, you, you know, sweep, you clean. That's, that's under God. God pays attention. I remember when I was in a, a little church in Minnesota, we would uh, come in on Saturday nights and clean the church for Sunday morning. And I'm sitting in the, cleaning in the bathroom there and about 10 o'clock at night. I'm tired. And, and, uh, but you know what? I thought, I'm not doing this for everybody to say, wow, that's really nice. I'm doing it because it's God's house. I'm doing it for him. And if you can have that attitude, then all the things that bother you, bitterness, stuff like that, because the worst thing you can do when you're having a problem, by the way, is to uh, get mad at people or get mad at God. Two things. Because if God is, or if God is proving you, if God is taking you down a trail that he wants you to be on, you're not going to learn it. If you get mad at some person and blame it, wasn't well, that person? None of this would happen. You, you, you don't want to do that because then you become bitter, and you know bitter is a dumb thing. I mean, all that is is it's a poison that you drink, hoping somebody else will get upset or somebody else will feel bad. You know, you're the one. It's a very, very, it's a, it's a bad thing for the church. It's a bad thing for you. Now. Yeah, this money thing was something I learned that time when I was in Mexico because we never had it, and we always had to depend on it. When you're in a situation you always have to depend on, God always comes through. God wants you to be a righteous person. That is one thing he repeats over and over. He wants you to be a righteous person. What is a righteous person? A righteous person obedient to God. Do you know what the secret, for, secret of provision is? I mean, you think, hmm, is there a secret for this? How to be how God to provide? It's obedience. That's a secret. There's a verse, uh, Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He's talking about the food and clothing and things up ahead there, and how he, God clothes the, takes care of the birds of the air, and, the, you know, and, and then wouldn't he do that with you? God is a good God. He does good things. He wants you to seek first the kingdom of God. And by that way, it, by the way, that verse does not say, uh, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things you can work for. It says they'll be added unto you. Not that you won't try, but it isn't about work. It isn't about the, it isn't about the money. It isn't about the fear. It's about trusting God and putting him first in your life. And the way you do that, the way you come to these conclusions, you spend time with him. He wants you to do that. This is, like I said, it's the voice of God. This is him talking. You open this book, you, he speaks to you. And you don't, you don't just open it up and say, well, you know, I think I, I've read this book. And, you know, it was pretty good, but it doesn't work that way. It needs to be searched like you're searching, uh, uh, searching fields. You're, you're, looking, uh, you're looking in the mine for gold or diamonds or whatever. You have to dig and you have to work. And you have to dig and you work and you search and you search. And then you do that. Seek and it shall be open. Knock and it shall be open. Seek and you shall find. These things God will give you, but he wants you to make an effort to want to. The biggest thing you can do is to want to, to honor God. Now, uh, 
I learned that, uh, that the, it wasn't my passport that got me across the border. It wasn't my car that got me down where I'm going to get to. It wasn't my um, intelligence that got me a, a good job. Or anything. It, was all, it was God who did that. You've got you to gotta give glory to him. And that, that is one of the most important things God wants us to do. Missions is one of these things was, uh, was far and away the greatest thing I ever did in my life. Far and away. There isn't anything I could ever imagine uh, doing anything else. It was the greatest time in my life, those years I spent in El Paso. Uh, all my family was down there. They learned a lot of things, too. They, they were right along. I made a point of, of pointing it out to them, too, to my children. We had a, when we, before we went on the mission field, we had this prayer list we used to hold. It's a really good thing to do, folks, you have with your kids. Make a little book that say prayer list. Here's my prayer requests, and you have, you only allow reasonable type prayers, and you have a date and the description of the prayer, and then another date. The first date is the date you, you ask the prayer, and you write it right there, then the other date you leave open for the time when God answers it, then you fill that up. You know what? After a couple of years, you look back in a book, and you see how many times God answered your prayer, and he does a lot. doesn't necessarily do it right away. Sometimes it's immediately. Sometimes it's six months. Sometimes it's, I mean, there's been a lot of things about that, but God, God is looking for someone to trust him. Uh, God wants um, us to look at him, to take the burden and give it over to him. He wants, doesn't want us to carry the burden. We needlessly suffer because we carry a burden we don't need to because we are trying to solve the problem. When we could give it over to him, he wants us to do that. He is a good God. He is a good father. And if you're walking down the wrong road, he's going he's gonna to correct you. And sometimes he'll kind of tap you on the shoulder, go that way. If you don't do it, then he'll, a little harder tap. And as Pastor said, he just turns up the heat. He is going to get his way. You know why? Not because he doesn't love you, but because he does. He knows. He knows what's the best route. Just like a parent and a child, they do things they don't understand. You don't understand as an adult. Believe me, the worst thing, being an adult, is being independent. Just like a child, if they're independent and a little kid run around, they, they end up being a terror. There's a lot of them around. You know, we know, we know kids, uh, you know, that right now, uh, godly children are kind of an odd, oddity in the world. But God is a better father. Just, and when you, when you become a, you need to teach your children that when they stop being dependent on you, they need to be dependent on God, just like us. Because our God is a good God. He does good things. So, uh, the uh, mission trips, the money, I, I hope, you know, if you're, if you're considering a mission trip or you know, want to go on one of these things, don't, don't think of the money to hold you back. Just say, do I want to go? And if you do, say, God, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'll give that to you. Believe me, he does own the cattle on a thousand hills. If you, if you didn't have to go, if you didn't have to pay any money, would you go? If you got somebody who'd provide the money, would you go? God can do all those things. You just have to trust him. I hope, I hope you do that. I hope that uh, you learn a little bit about God and his, uh, it's a good place to learn about trust and faith. And, you know, we have, and I'll, I'm going to close with this, but I'm going to say that people have go down there a lot of times and say, I got this fire in me. And I was down in El Paso and went back home and the fire went out. I come back to El Paso a second time, so I get the fire back. I say the fire wasn't El Paso. The fire was down there. You changed your relationship with God. You prayed in the morning, thought about God during the day, you prayed at night. I mean, that's what you started doing. You didn't do that before. If you do those things, you stay closer to God. That, that's, that's where the joy, that's where the peace and love is. Anyway, okay, let's pray. Dear Lord in heaven, we love you so much, and we thank you for your goodness and mercy. Lord, we all wish to understand you more. We all wish to come closer to you. We want to have a joy in our life, Lord, but that joy can only come through you. The joy, the peace, the love, what everyone searches for can only come through you and your word. Lord, thank you for this night. Thank you for this church that's such a shining light to this world. And I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen it. The people here, I pray you would bless them in a mighty way that only you can. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. And Lord, as always, we thank you for what you are going to do. And in Jesus' dear name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> there is uh, 
just on a real practical uh, point, it is absolutely one of the most reasonably priced missions trips out there. Probably the most reasonably priced missions trip out there. Uh, $350 a person. That includes all your uh, lodging, your food, uh, travel, all that stuff uh, once you're in El Paso. So we just have to get to El Paso. Um, and uh, we are actually looking at uh, running a bus again. Um, <laughs> but um, <coughs> uh, it, it, does, it saves on a lot of costs. But um, uh, you can begin uh, even now saving for that if you want to put, um, uh, you know, some people they actually put money in weekly. And uh, you can just put mission trips and it'll go to your account for the mission trips and we'll save it for you. And uh, you can do that from now until then and have it all saved up. And you can ask us every once in a while, and we'll tell you how much you have in there. And uh, so uh, feel free to do that. But it is it's $350 a person uh, once you go to Mexico, once you get into Mexico. So I'd figure on another probably $150, $200 for your um, uh, trip there and back if we do take the bus. Otherwise, you can uh, take a plane and fly into El Paso, and it's probably in the three, 350 range. Um, if you catch a good good price. Um, so anyway, thank you, Brother Jarvis. It, it is going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. And uh, without a doubt, um, it'll be life-changing. Um, let's sing, uh, let's stand together, and let's sing our song of dismissal. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord? Wonderful all together, isn't he wonderful, 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 isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's word, isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? All right.